Good morning and welcome to the Springs Church Online. We are so excited that you are joining us today and thank you for inviting us into your living rooms. We are so excited amongst everything that is going on. We have a God who loves us, who's doing mighty things, and we are thankful that we live in 2020 in the time of technology where we can continue to have a church service together even though we physically cannot be together. My name is Ashley Mosley. I am Pastor Brian's wife. We are partners in ministry, and on behalf of him and myself and our entire team at the Springs Church, we thank you for joining us today. We ask for you to participate with us. We ask for you to participate during worship and prayer and leaning into the word. We ask you to have your kids joining you. Hopefully you're all still in your PJs eating breakfast. We don't know, but we are so happy for this opportunity. And here at the Springs Church, we believe in getting the life-changing message of Jesus Christ into your hand, knowing that you have a purpose and a plan that God has always intended for you. Join together in this time of worship.
turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
for you. He is for us. He is for his church. He is for the lost. His favor be upon you and your children and their children. His favor be on the generations. No more perfect time for this song than right now. When the world is feeling like they are losing hope, we know that our hope is found in Jesus alone. And we turn to him and we go to him in prayer. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We're going to join with other churches all across the country right now in something called Unite 714. It comes from that scripture. And we're going to go to the Lord today in prayer. We're going to go to Him and we're going to ask Him. And we're going to go to Him first. We're going to go to Him before the news. We're going to go to Him before our friends and our family. We're going to humble ourselves and go before Him. And He's going to hear. And He is going to heal our land. Let's go to prayer. Lord, you are our heavenly Father. You rule and reign over the whole earth. Nothing takes you by surprise. Despite the overwhelming implications of COVID-19, you promise all things will work together for our good. Today, our hope is not in the governments of the world. Our hope is in you. Lord, thank you for the power of your name. Heavenly Father, we are asking for your glorious kingdom to come into our broken world. As COVID-19 produces uncertainty around the globe, may millions of people in every nation find healing, safety, security, and salvation as they turn to you in repentance and faith. Lord, thank you for your salvation. Lord, in an hour when resources are scarce, when we thank, we thank you for giving us our daily bread, we cry out to you, provide for our friends, neighbors, and all those hurting in the world. Give supernatural strength, protection, and wisdom to the doctors, nurses, caregivers, scientists, government officials, and spiritual leaders battling this crisis. Lord, we thank you for your provision. Lord, I ask you for your forgiveness for sins hindering my relationship with you. Cleanse me of my unbelief, my selfishness, and unrighteous anger. I forgive those who have offended me. We cry out for our world to turn to you in repentance. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, we do not let, do not let us be tempted to live in fear, panic, and cynicism. Deliver us from the effects of COVID-19. We unite in faith with millions of other Christians around the world. We ask you to eradicate COVID-19 from our planet and bring revival and awakening to the nations of our world. Lord, thank you for delivering us from evil. God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you that our hope is found in you. In Jesus' mighty name, the name above all names, the name that saves and rescues, amen.
Well, good morning. My name is Rory. I'm one of the pastors here at the Springs Church. We are the Springs Church, and it is our mission to get the life-changing word of Jesus Christ out to the community, to the, to the nation, to the world, so that people might live a life of purpose and fulfillment as God meant us to live. And we are so glad that you have joined us here this morning online. If you have joined the Springs Church for the very first time this morning, a special welcome to you. It's always great to have new people here, and, and we'd like to get to know you a little bit, and we're wondering if you could do us a favor, and perhaps uh, you could text uh, the words new to the springs, LV, to 97,000, and we will uh, contact you and let you know a little bit more about our church. This is a place that we hope that you can come week after week after week, uh, get to know us here, and uh, get to know God. We want you to get to know God, not, not just know about God, but to actually know God. We want you to find freedom from those things that have held you back, those things that haunt you at night or keep you awake, you know, those things like guilt and shame and regret. We want you to find freedom from that, and we want you to discover your purpose, because God didn't put any of us here on this world just to take up space. We are here for a purpose, and once you find your purpose, we hope you will use that purpose uh, to make a difference in the world, and we are glad that you are here today. Um, Normally, uh, of course, if people were here at the church, we would take up an offering. Well, we're not going to do that here. But that said, we know uh, that we people at the Springs Church love to give. It just makes us feel good to give back to God because he gives us so much. And we don't want you not to have that feeling. So remember, there are other ways to give. You can give online at uh, thespringslv.com, or you can text any amount you like into 8432 one, and we will take your tithes and offerings and be happy and grateful for you to help support the church. Thank you very much about that. Uh, a little, a uh, few announcements that we want to make before we jump right into the service here is that these small groups of this church are very, very important. And we hope that you will continue to meet with your small groups online somehow, uh, figure out a way to do that, conferencing. If you need help with that, contact us here at the church and we'll, we'll help give you a hand and, and show you how to do that. Uh, we don't have growth track. We have a thing called growth track here, which is uh, a, a way to get connected with the church. But, of course, we are postponing that until further notice. We don't know how long this crazy virus thing is going to last. And also our outreach with the Salvation Army, which we do once a month, um, we're also postponing that for a while. So we will get back to those things, we promise. Also, the Refresh uh, Conference, the Ladies' Conference. Now, if you were signed up for that conference, you've already been contacted to let you know that it's being postponed until July. But uh, if you haven't signed up, it's being postponed until July. So by then, believe me, we'll all need to be refreshed, especially you ladies who have your kids home right now <laughs> and uh, normally don't. So uh, those are all the announcements. And, and we are now starting in the second week of a series called Fearless. Fearless. Well... These are fearful times we're living in right now. You've seen the panic just by walking into the grocery store. And so uh, we're going to talk about how to be fearless. It's a very important subject. So we'll begin. Watch this video. As I look around me, all I see in the news is kids that shoot and abuse. Nations at odds over borders and gods or stories of you that shoot up and use. Dads with their toys neglecting their boys and moms with their curls. What are we teaching our girls? The media's eyes grow hollow and cold as prophets soar from the horrors they've told. Every night at six from behind a tall desk teaching me to fear that or fear this. I listen in fear to the stories I'm told. Oh, how I wish I could learn to fear less. But from deep inside, not of my bones or my flesh, a still small voice calming my worry and stress. It says to me, fear not, for I've got all of this. Trust in me, my child, and live. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Church Online from the Springs Church. We are so glad that you're here today. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here. And it is my joy and honor to welcome you all here, not in person, but online. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really believe that God has a powerful message of encouragement that he wants to speak to our hearts today. And this morning, I want to continue to talk to you about this idea of being fearless, Last week, we talked about and addressed head-on how to overcome a spirit 
of fear. But today I want to dive in a little bit more and I want to talk to you about being fearless and never giving up in the most difficult of times. You know, on top of everything else that we may be dealing with in our lives, this past week has, has brought about some new and serious trials in, our, in each of our lives, dealing with the craziness of trying to stop this virus. So on top of everything else going on in our lives, we find news messages that we watch on the news like the stock market is dropping, the schools are closing, businesses are shutting down, and we have to do social distancing now, and we have to work from home and limit travel and limit going out and, and limit being in groups, and they tell us just to stay home. And I got to tell you, for an introvert, this is the time for an introvert's to shine, baby, shine. We're going to have a great time. But I have to admit this morning that I've struggled. I've struggled with fear. I've struggled with anxiety this week. If you'll allow me just to be honest and vulnerable with you for a moment, I find myself fearful sometimes that I may catch the virus, that I may spread the virus to those that I love. I'm fearful sometimes and anxious for my family. I'm fearful and anxious sometimes for my church family, for our economy, for my economy. And not only that, but I've also wrestled with these feelings of just being overwhelmed and restless and worried and stressed. I don't know if you're listening to this message and you can relate to that at all. But in the midst of all of that going on in my heart and struggling from time to time, I still hear that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And he's beckoning me to fearlessness. He's beckoning me and he's beckoning you as well to be unafraid to be unintimidated, to be unshrinking, to be bold, to be brave, to be courageous and full of faith and trust in God. And so my prayer for myself and for you, all of our church family, is this. Father, never let fear stop us from being who you've called us to be. And Lord, never let anxiety hinder us from doing what you've called us to do. And never let worry paralyze us from boldly advancing the kingdom of our God. Lord, would you teach our hearts to let faith and never fear be our default response when we hit tough times like these. And the scripture that I want to encourage you with today comes from Psalm 71. Many scholars believe it was written by King David when he was late in his years. In Psalm 71, I want to read from verse 14 through 18. It says this, As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. Verse 16, it says, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me. And to this day, I declare your marvelous deeds. Verse 18, when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all those who are to come. And as I've read those words this past week and I've meditated on the truth of God's word, there's been this fresh sense of determination arising in my spirit. The enemy's attempts to intimidate me, to instill me with fear, have merely served to strengthen my sense of resolve. 
And there are three powerful statements that we glean from this portion of Scripture that I want to encourage you today to receive them for yourselves and apply them to your lives. Number one, jot this down if you're taking notes with me. Number one, I will never stop hoping. Well, that scripture that we just read in verse 14, David says, as for me, I will always have hope. Friends, we've always got hope. We have a hope that no virus can kill. It's just, is it just the hope that things will one day get back to normal and we can continue our everyday lives the way it used to be? No, we have much more hope than that. Normal was comfortable. Normal was selfish. Normal was spiritually safe. Normal was lukewarm. My wife and I, my family and I, we attend a life group at our church, and uh, one of the members shared a testimony this week, and she said this, I was walking around my house and doing house cleaning and talking to the Lord, and I was saying, Lord, I don't even know what to say or what to ask for since all this is so scary and unpredictable. She said, I want to ask you to allow us to go back to normal. I want to live how we used to live. But then she said, I felt him say to me, I don't want everyone to go back to normal. Normal is lazy, complacent. And I am not first. He told me to pray for a new normal where his, his church puts him first. Where we are bold and we spread the good news of the gospel and we stop being lazy and complacent and we serve other people. She went on to say that he keeps telling me, now's the time. He also told me that the church will have revival and that prayer will change things. We will see chains broken. We will see answers to prayer. We will see walls come down, deliverances, healings, miracles that we've been waiting for, all because he is the sovereign Lord and he is in control. Church, I want to remind you today that our hope is not in the government Although we support our government leaders. Our hope is not in doctors. Although we pray for them. Our hope is not in the spiritual leaders and counselors of this world. Although we listen to their wisdom. Our hope is in the one who spoke all things into existence. Our hope is in the all-knowing. The all-powerful. The ever-present God of the universe. Our hope is in the one who heals deaf ears, who opens blind eyes, who raises the dead. Our hope, my friends, is in Jesus. It's in Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the bread that has come from heaven to nourish our souls. He is the one who delivers the captives. He is the one who restores the broken. He strengthens those of us who are weak. Jesus is our provider. He's our comforter. He's our source. He's our strength. He's our redeemer. He's our rock. He's our sustainer. He is our assurance. He is our firm foundation. My friends, Jesus is our shelter in trouble. He's the light when the world is dark. He is the prince of peace. He's the lamb of God. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the resurrection and the life. At his name, darkness trembles. In his presence, demons flee. And here's our promise from scripture today. It's over in Isaiah chapter 40 where it says this. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So number one, I will never, ever stop hoping. Number two is this. 
I will never stop praising. I will never ever stop praising. Back in Psalm 71 verse 14, uh, David says, I will praise you more and more. Even when times are hard, even when things are uncertain, I will praise you in an increasingly more way. The enemy wants to silence our song. The enemy wants to pause our praise. The enemy wants us to turn our worship into worry. And one of Satan's goals is to get us to stop praising our God because he knows that God inhabits the praises of his people. My friends, when we praise the Lord, something special and supernatural begins to happen. Temptations lose their power. Sadness is turned into joy. Hope is renewed. A shift begins when we focus on God, when we focus on Him instead of all the negative things going on around us, our perspective changes. So what if this coming week we watched a little less news and we scrolled a little bit less on social media and we replaced that with time reading the scripture, getting into the truth for ourselves, spend time praying and praising our God. My friends, let's put Satan on notice this morning that no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter what is going on around us in this world, we are going to praise the Lord. Let's say with the psalmist in in Psalm 34 where he says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's never ever stop praising our God. Let's remember what Peter told us over in the New Testament. In 1 Peter 2 verse 9 he said, Listen church, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. Why? That you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Number three is this. I want to encourage you to take this for yourself. Take this statement for yourself. I will never stop hoping. That's number one. Number two, I will never stop praising. And number three is this. I will never stop declaring. I will never stop telling others. Back in Psalm 71 and verse 15, it says things like, My mouth will tell. It says, I will proclaim your mighty acts. It says, I declare your power to the next generation. It is through the declaration of the word of God that people are saved. And it is through the declaration of the word of God that the saved are strengthened. And Satan knows the power of declaration. And so he does everything he can to stop God's people from declaring the word of God. And listen, whether, whether I declare it in person or online or to small groups or to large groups or just to one-on-one, I have made up my mind. It's a firm resolution and resolve in my heart. I will never stop. As long as there is lungs, lungs in my, air in my lungs, um, I will never stop declaring the praises and the word of God. And just as a side note here, I want to speak directly to all those uh, intercessors or prayer warriors in our church and around the world. This is the time for you to shine. This is the time for you to rise up in the Lord and to take your place. Pray for your pastors during this time. Pray for your teachers, your evangelists, your prophets. Pray for all of those who declare the word of God. I read a quote this week that said this, there will be more power in the pulpit when there is more prayer in the pews. So I want to encourage you, church. I want to urge you, church, begin to pray and pray with fervency and passion in your soul. Seek the Lord that the word of God would be declared fearlessly. Amen. 
Paul, Paul the Apostle knew this to be true when he exhorted the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, he, he said this, Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chain, Paul said. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. I want to remind you, church, that the, that, uh, the only preacher in the Springs Church is not me. I want to remind you, it's not me or Ashley or Pastor Rory or Pastor uh, Adam. You are a minister. You are a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. And listen, guys, all this is important. This whole message is important. Why? Because there is coming a great spiritual awakening across our land. As our world descends into greater darkness with deception and wars and natural disasters and moral decline and diseases and plagues and even the increase of persecution around the world, the church of Jesus Christ will awake and will have the opportunity to shine brighter than ever before. Listen, all of this is important because Jesus will return to the earth. The time is drawing near. It's time to refocus our lives. It's time to reset. It's time to focus our hearts once again upon loving the Lord our God with all of our hearts and souls and mind and strength and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. But listen, Jesus Christ will physically and visibly very soon return to this earth for a second time to gather his church and establish his kingdom. And I just hear the Holy Spirit right now inviting us in. Will you join me? Will you join Jesus in his mission in this earth? Will you partner with me? Will you shine for me? And will you, will you refuse to allow fear to conquer you? Will you choose to refuse to allow fear to overtake you? Instead, will you choose to be fearless in God? And again... I hope and pray that you can say with me with fresh resolve in your heart and a renewed conviction in your spirit that I will never stop hoping because Jesus is my hope. I will never stop praising because my God is worthy and I will never stop declaring because this is my purpose. This is why we're here, church. We, are, we have been given a mission. And our mission is to spread the gospel, to spread the love of Jesus Christ however we can. And I want to invite you today to be a part of that through our church or whatever church that you're a part of here this morning. And I want you to know that God loves you, that he's with you. He has a plan for your life. And if you will put your full trust in him today, you will find that he is the sweetest savior that you've ever known. He, you will find that he is the most wonderful counselor and best friend that you will ever have in life. And if you're here today and you're, you're watching, you're plugged in online and you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I want to give you an opportunity right now to say this prayer and begin a relationship with Him in your heart today. Would you say this with me? Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from You. I turn away from my sin and I turn toward You. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me today. And I welcome you, Holy Spirit, 
into my life. Jesus, please baptize me in the power of the Holy Spirit today. And by faith, I receive him now. Thank you, Father, for filling me with your power today. It's in Jesus' name I ask. It's in Jesus' name I believe. It's in Jesus' name I receive. And everybody said, amen. Father God, I pray for my brothers and sisters today who find themselves stressed out and worried and maybe wrestling like I've been this past week with fear and anxiety. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would receive just a fresh revelation of who you are today. Father, I pray that they would resolve in their hearts that they will never stop hoping, that they will never stop praising, and that they will never, ever stop declaring the goodness of God and the truth of the Word of God. I pray in Jesus' name that you provide for those who are in need this morning. I pray in Jesus' name that you heal the sick this morning. I pray in Jesus' name that you restore family relationships and marriages this morning because of your great power and your great name. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. I want to close today with a closing blessing from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 verses 24 through 26 we sang about it earlier this morning but it says this this is my blessing and prayer for everyone tuning in right now the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace in Jesus name God bless you guys Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of the week.